Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger Spur, Mud Fossil University, interviewing Roger at Mud Fossil University. And Roger, you claim there are dragons. Oh, yes, I do. That is absolutely correct, Roger. Well, can you point them out? Absolutely, I can. There's one right there. And did you know that the ancients knew that there was dragons all over the earth and they had them on their maps? No, I didn't know that, Roger. Well, I will show you that that's true. Let's examine this dragon, first of all, very quickly, briefly, just to see where his throat was and his head. His head is in this area here. It's a little obscured, but it is there. Now, his throat runs down here, all the way down, and this is the decomposing effluence of his body. And there is a gash across his throat right here where he bled out in the desert. Any autopsy anatomist or doctor will easily understand what they see here. And this dragon runs the entire length of Africa, North Africa. And the tail is over here doing the exact same thing, has the exact same scales. Now, as, as I showed you, let, let me show you one more time so that you have an idea. Whoops, holy smokes. Ah, run for your life. All right, over here, here is his throat. Those are scales. Those are dragon scales. Those are not just accidental bumps and, and mountains. Those are dragon scales. That's the throat. I have s shown this over and over and over and over again. That doesn't happen by accident. Now, and they knew this. And you say, well, oh, Roger, how did they know this? Well, I don't know how they knew it, but they knew it. And they knew that Iceland was also a dragon. And you can say, well, show me that proof, Roger. I say, okay, I will. Here's the proof. There is the dragon. You see that? There's the dragon. I just showed you that dragon. There's Atlantis. That's the eye of the Sahara. All right? They knew these things. There's the gash in the dragon's throat. And then I say, well, the other day I posted about Iceland. Now, I have 100,000 people that tip me off to all kinds of things. And guess what? There's a dragon here. And I think that's the one that... Um, the Bosnian guy is looking into. And this is the dragon, which is Iceland. Dragon. It's all scales. We know the scales represent a dragon. There's no question about that anymore. So, Iceland now is a dragon. Now, I did a video on this, and I had several people comment, and there is a story about this. I'm going to read you right now. It's going to blow your mind. All right, I just want to explain to you something. I, people, I had a guy the other day, and I think he was complimenting me, but it made it sound like this guy's crazy. He's going off of this, and he's talking about dragons, and he's talking about outer space rocks or biology, and, you know, and, and it is. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And physics and everything else that I cover, yes, I agree. But... We have been literally told to believe things that just don't seem to add up. And that's all I am is an adding machine. I say, let me look at this, let me look at this, let me look at this, let me look at this. Does not work. What does work? This one, this one, this one, and this one all add up to mean this. Dragons. That's all I am is an adding machine. I don't do anything special. And I think he was trying to compliment me, and I appreciate that. But I am not crazy. <laughs> these things are real. Now, how do I cover all these bases? You know, because there is a lot of bases to cover, and I really would be nobody if I didn't have the people that I have sending me things that relate to the things that I'm trying to figure out. I can't figure this out by myself. So I put this up, well, I don't know, a day or two ago. Now, I have over 100,000 people. So what happens? I put this up, and I start talking. Look at this crazy stuff. I said, what is this thing? I have no idea what's going on there. And, and the, but there's writing on a lot of these maps. These people are from Iceland and everywhere else. They send me things, and they say, there's a story about this. And I said, well, what's the story? <laughs> and uh, let me see if I can find it here. 
Well, first of all, this person said that Hecla is that spot, and it's a perpetually condemned to storm, snow, vomit, stones, under terrible noise. Then there was another guy down here. Here it is right here. This one here. Um, I think these guys were kind of arguing about it. One guy was, this, uh, whatever, how you pronounce that, is from Iceland. He said, I never heard of this before. And this guy, uh, Norman Husk, I don't know, one or the other, but this is the folklore. You can come up and watch that. Now, when you see this, it's just absolutely phenomenal. After just seeing what I showed you with the ancient maps, describing the entire... Iceland wrapped as a dragon. Where do you hear that what this is about? This is absolutely phenomenal. Just absolutely blows my mind. Okay, here it comes. This is uh this is a shocker because it's got every possibility of actually being true. And it's called Assy Paddle. <laughs> that's that that's, that's, that's gonna kill me through the whole thing. But anyway, Assy Paddle and the Mester Storm Worm. Now, the Mester Stormworm is the dragon, and Asti Paddle was the guy that confronted him. So, one day, a terrible evil reached the shores of the kingdom. The Mester Stormworm, king of all the sea monsters. Now, long ago, and this was words by Rosie Young, illustration by Lindley Barba. Now, long ago, an ancient kingdom, and this is in Iceland apparently, lived a farm boy named Assipaddle. His six brothers spent their days working the farm with their father, but Assipaddle merely laid in the ashes by the peat fire, his head full of stories. So he's got a fire made with the peat moss in that area, the bogs of peat, and he's just laying there taking it easy and the ashes are falling on him all day long. So he would think about these stories and sagas in which he envisioned himself as the hero. I'm going to go out and slay the dragon. Now his father, his family mocked his stories and loathed him for his laziness, but Asipel couldn't care less. He continued to lie by the fire, unperturbed by the thick ash covering him. Only his sister was kind to him, but she soon left to work in the royal palace, and Asipel was alone. One day, a terrible evil reached the shores of the kingdom, the Mester Storm Worm, king of all the sea monsters. Ships would crumble before the lash of his tail, one sweep of his tongue. He leveled cities, devoured nations. <laughs> But worst of all was his breath was a poison deadly to all living things, and he laid his great hand in the shallows and opened his maw, his jaws. At the loss of what to do, the king of this land took his wife's advice. So his wife is advising the king. She says, seek the guidance of the spay man. He's a wizard. And he told him to order to appease the storewood, the people must feed seven maidens at dawn every Saturday. Seven maidens, they wanted their daughters to be fed to this dragon. So, it was done. They actually did it. The storeworm's wrath was kept at bay. Yet he did not leave, and the people quickly grew resistance to giving up any more of their daughters. Well... That's a reasonable reaction. The king sought the wisdom of the spay man a second time, and the spay man told him that in order to truly appease the worm, the king must feed the loveliest maiden in the land, his own daughter, the princess, Jem the Lovely. Well, I don't know where he came up with these names. All right, so the princess was his own daughter, Jem the Lovely. Now, I don't know why, well, anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. His heart was heavy. The king agreed, but was given a few weeks' grace to prepare himself 
for the loss of his daughter. The king used the time to scour the land for a hero who might save his daughter from this terrible fate, promising that such a man would be given the kingdom. He'd be the king of everything. He'd give him everything if he could save his daughter. The king's legendary sword, also the sickle snapper, sicker snapper, which led, which had once belonged to Odin. So it's just a, that's the powerhouse of all weapons. And the princess's hand in marriage. So this guy's going to get the whole enchilada. Bada boom, you're going to have everything if you can just get rid of this dragon. So far away on that distant farm, the news reached Asipala. And he knew at once, instantly, what he must do. Asipal's father owned the swiftest horse in the land, Titgong, and he had once overheard his father telling his mother that in order to attain the horse's full speed, the rider must blow through a goose's trample. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the goose trample is, but he would have to blow through it. As Assy Paddle took a smoldering clod of peat, so he reached into the fire that was keeping him warm, and, he, and they smolder. They don't actually burn until you flush them with oxygen. And so now I'm taking this as almost literal at this point. I know it sounds just absolutely insane. Roger's a crazy person, but let's continue. Assy Paddle took that smoldering clod of peat from, his, from the fire, carried it in a bucket, stole the goose's trapple, whatever that is, from his father's coat pocket, and was off into the night on Teet Gong's back. Now, apparently he could fly. Two claps on the shoulder, and Teet Gong was flying across the land. Now, whether he was just running fast or actually flying, je ne sais pas. It means I don't know. But Assy Paddle took the goose's trapple and blew, and with another burst of speed, they were swifter than the wind. So they're really rocking it. Pew! The air whipped the ash from Assy Paddle's clothes, a stream behind them in sooty, sooty gray banners. Despite this, Assy Paddle did not reach the store worm until the dawn of the last day, just before. The king has to give up his daughter. Now, he's, he's really upset. He's, he's at the end of his rope. What am I going to do? I don't want to feed my daughter to this thing. So he says, by now the king had grown absolutely desperate. He came to the shore with his great sword, the one from Odin, the real prize here of, of weaponry, planning to face the monster himself, which was just unbelievable. This thing could eat nations. I mean, what's this guy going to do? So, as the sun rose, the store worm began to yawn. Water rushing into its great mouth, and before the king or his attendants could react, Assy Paddle jumped out, he leaped into a little boat, pushed it out into the water, and he got sucked in as he dragged Assy Paddle in the boat straight into Storm Worm's cavernous mouth, and then down, down into the dark of its belly. I mean, this thing is just absolutely gigantic. It's like going into a whole new world. The boat grounded, just like it would go ashore. Assy Paddle knew he had but little time before the storm would yawn again. He jumped from the boat, peat in hand, ran faster than had ever run in his life. On and on he went, until at last he reached the store worm's liver. So now he's at the liver larger than a mountain and oilier than all the fish in the sea. That thing was nasty. Livers clean your blood, so that's a nasty spot to be. A large knife, he sliced open the creature's liver and shoved the smoldering peat inside, covered it up a little bit, blew on it, and then the peat took off, started and lit. And you would have an excellent fire going there, absolutely no question. That stuff would burn magnificently. It's just nothing more than fat. Just be an absolute monstrous fire. Now, with a spit and a crackle, the monster's liver caught fire and soon the blaze spread. And that's exactly what would happen. Assy Paddle ran back to the boat. Just as he clambered inside, the worm gave a huge wretch. In one motion, Assy Paddle and his boat went flying out. 
thrown out into the open air on a tide of brine. The stormwood screamed and writhed in agony, smoke billowing from its mouth. Its tongue caught on the horns of the moon. I mean, yikes, this thing's pretty good size. But slipped and fell, cleaving Norway and Sweden off of Finland. It tossed and thrashed, and with each throw of aguish, teeth fell from its mouth. The first became the Orkney Islands, second Shetland Islands, the last the Faroe Islands. Then finally the Mester Storeworm coiled its body up into a tight knot, as we saw, breathed its last breath, its body became what, we, what would one day be Iceland. It is said the volcanoes and hot springs of that land are evidence that deep below the surface, the store worm is still burning. As for Asipel, the king named him his heir, and all rejoiced. It was discovered the queen was working with the spay man. She was in bed with him, really. She, she was her lover. This was the only reason she urged her husband to heed his cruel advice, and for this she was banished. Assy Paddle took the spay man's life with sicker snap <laughs> as penance for the evil he had sown. Now, a week later, Assy Paddle married Princess Jem de Lovely in a celebration the likes of which the kingdom had never seen and would never see again. He was reunited with his sisters, who became the princess lady-in-waiting with his sister, the one that was his friend, who became the princess's lady-in-waiting, and he ever fo even found in his own heart to forgive his cruel brothers, who had always belittled him and, and, and made him Feel, well, he didn't feel bad because he just disregarded him. But anyway, he forgave them for being against him so much. Each night, Jem the Lovely would rest her head on Assy Paddle's chest and listen to his soft voice weaving legends and folk tales into being. Assy Paddle grew into a wise and noble king, and they were happy until the end of their days. <laughs>